Hey everyone and Happy New Year 2019. Yeah, I guess maybe. I know it's been a while since I've done any of these videos, but uh, I was trying to get better first. And no, that's a story for another time. Today, I'm here to talk to you about my top 10 meh TV moments. And when I say meh, I basically means the TV moments that were not good, uh, were not bad. It was just, you know, kind of in the middle. Like you put on a, a show on the, uh, Sunday afternoon and you don't really want to watch it, but you're still watching it. And it turns out it's not good and it's not bad. It's just kind of, you know, meh. So when I say TV moments, I'm basically trying to emulate my feelings when I was watching the show. I didn't want to say my top 10 meh TV show because it's basically about my feelings and how I felt watching them. It might not be a real representation of how good or bad the actual show is. It's just a representation of how I felt watching the show. So now we can start with my top 10 meh TV moments on the year 2018. 18? 18? Yeah, 2018. While well, number 10, we have the Arrowverse from the uh, DC CW TV shows. Basically, uh, Arrow, uh, Supergirl, The Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow. I mean, I'm not going to include Legends of Tomorrow in this list because it's the best show they have. I just love that show. It's the last part, no, the first part of the season, of the new season, was extraordinary. The last part of the last season was extraordinary. So, Legends of Tomorrow in 2018 was the best show that CW had to offer. However, I put the rest of the Arrowverse shows on top 10 because I didn't like any of it. Like, I, I think I stopped watching Arrow. I didn't watch any of season 5 Arrow because it was bad to me. It was unwatchable, basically. I didn't watch any of The Flash because I didn't care about it. I didn't watch any of Supergirl. Like, the last time I watched Supergirl was season one, and then I just stopped because I don't like it. And maybe you do, but I just don't, so I just skipped over. I just watched the crossovers, and that might be the only positive point, and that's why they're not further down in my list of meh. So at number nine we have, and excuse me a way to say it, Owen is the new black. Season six of Owen is the new black was very, very, very bad. Well, not bad. It was meh. It, was, it didn't pull me in like the other seasons. The various storylines were bland. Piper Chapman was almost going out, so the, I didn't get attached to any of the characters. I mean, I know that they uh, they started going to some interesting storyline but when i started watching the show all the hype of the orange in the black was dead for i like, since season four already so to me in 2018 orange in the new black is one of the most meh show and mo one of the most meh season that we ever had from that show so do better netflix and number eight we have <laughs> oh jesus kimmy schmidt that show must just die like Really, the only reason why the show went for so long was because of Titus, Titus, Titus. Yeah, she helped me. She was, it's because of Titus and even him started to get less funny. So it was really mad. Like, it's like it's, it's become a little bit like false comedy. Just the jokes are less funny. The, the storylines are less involving. Just, you know, killed the show already. I mean, it wasn't bad, like, there have been worse shown this year. It's just that this year, 2018, well, last year, 2018, uh, Kimmy Schmidt, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, the long name, don't know why they did that. But Unbreakable Schmidt, what, it was basically one of, if you didn't watch that season of Incredible, uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, you didn't miss anything, really, so, yeah. At number seven, we have Jack Ryan from the Amazon streaming service. And maybe you did like Jack Ryan, and I think at least one episode, one episode I did like, but the rest of it was just so... We've already seen that kind of show before. We've already seen that kind of storyline before, done better. I mean, one of the shows that did it the best was 24 in the earlier seasons. And Jack Ryan wasn't just up to par. Like, I like the the likability of John Krasinski. John 
John Krasinski. I hope that's how I say it. Yeah. I do like it, but he's not believable to me. To myself. Like to me. He's not believable as a, an action lead in that kind of show. And the whole terrorist team has been done so many times that unless you bring something new to it, like actually new, it's just going to be stale and bland. And that's what the show was. I mean, it was still okay, it just wasn't good or bad. So, at number six, <laughs> I, last year I had a tweet about it and people started kind of complaining and kind of agree. It was that uh, Manifest. Manifest is basically a ripoff of Lost and the four, the four, four, oh, oh, the forty-four hundred, four thousand four hundred. I don't know. Yeah, forty-four hundred. And just before Manifest started, I mean, from the from the trailers, from the previews, I could already see that Manifest was basically the forty-four hundred, like. It's the same thing, and it's not so. It's not to say that you shouldn't watch Manifest. I mean, you might like Manifest. It's just that the forty four hundred, at least the first two seasons, was the better show. So just go back and watch that because Manifest isn't it. At number five, and I know that the fans are going to whip me for it. Casa de Papel. Casa de Papel. The first season of Casa de Papel was extraordinary truly it was one of the best seasons or half season that we ever had on Netflix it was gripping it was enticing I didn't care about the second season I really didn't like to be honest when I was doing this list I was trying to see which was the best best shows of last year 2018 and I couldn't even remember what happened in the season in the second season of Casa de Papel I truly couldn't I had to go back and rewatch parts of it or rewatch the other reviews or the trailers because I didn't care. I, I just know that they, at the end, spoilers, at the end they go on an island and they succeeded in the, you know, robbery. But apart from that, I didn't get any big, like, heart wrenching or hard loving moment. The only one, not the only good thing, but the good thing about Casa of Papel, Casa de Papel, is that uh, what was it? Who was what's his name? Denver. Denver went to play in Elite. That's really the good, the good thing about Casa de Papel. I'm sorry to say it, but it's the truth, and you know it. I am so sorry that I have to put this show at number four, but this season of House of Cards was the well, meest that we ever had and it says that because the other were still like the first the the, the good seasons of House of God were one to three maybe and then it started going down when uh what's his name? Bo Willemon or something like that. When he left the show and just started going down, 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 down. And um, I didn't even I didn't even finish this season of House of Cards. I watched the first six, I think it's eight episodes. The first six episodes, and I was like, I truly don't care. I mean, it's not because of Frank and you know Kevin Spacey and his stuff. It's not because of that. It's just that, as a show, as a season, there was nothing really interesting to watch. So I would just watch it while you know playing games, and I wouldn't really be invested in what's happening. So I just stopped and. It's a sad way for that great of a show to die, but I guess it had to happen. For my number three of the mayest show of 2018, I'm sad to say that it's a show adapted from a book, was adapted into a movie, and I really liked the movie. I, I know people, reviewers and critics, they didn't like the movie, I, I don't care. But for me, Jim Carrey as Count Olaf in the series of unfortunate event movie was just excellent like excellent i like neil patrick from the you know how i met your mother days i really do he just doesn't 
have the same charisma as Count Olaf. It bothered me in the first season, and the second season wasn't better. Like, I didn't care. I mean, maybe it's because of my attachment from for the movie, and I know that the movie only covered basically what the first season covered. But um, the second season was just meh. I, I literally just flew through it without really having a second thought about it and getting invested in any of the why, why, what. I know that when I finished the last season it was like six episodes and I still didn't care about the second season or the rest of the show. And I mean, it's not that the actors or the writing, it's not even that, it's, it's not bad. It's just not interesting. I don't know if you get me. So it was just meh. Yeah. This is my top 10 list of the, well, this is the list of my top 10 meh moments of 2018 and it's with a broken heart that I have to put Doctor Who in here as number two because Doctor Who this season or what season 10, 12, 12, 11? well this season, the last season, the one that just ended in USA with the new, I don't, I don't even know why they changed it from Christmas Day to New, Year, new Year's Day maybe it just wants to be different from the other, I don't know and before everyone jumps on me, it's not because of the new doctor who's a woman, because I couldn't care less about that. I can care though that she doesn't, well, I can't really understand her without subtitles, at least the first three, three episodes. I have to have subtitles to be able to you know, catch up to what she was saying. And she talks a lot, Jesus. Not because she's a woman, but she talks a lot. And I've had trouble with that because She's constantly interrupting and, what's the word? Not vomiting, but you know, talking a lot about techno bubble stuff and if I can get hooked on that, I just get lost. Also the writing, the writing wasn't bad, that's why it's in my meh list, it's not in my worst list of the year, it's in my meh, like middle. Because the writing wasn't bad, the, the stories went bad. It just never felt like Doctor Who to me. And finally we get to number one. I've made the mistake of hyping this show. Like really hyping. I was on social media, I was on WhatsApp, like saying to people, this is the next best show in the world. My mistake was that I only watched the first episode. It went down here. <laughs> it really went down here for her, for them. And the show I'm talking about is basically it's called a discovery of witches. Like I had so much. I wanted to love this show, like so much. It's a show about witches and werewolves and vampires. That's my element. Like that's what I like. And the way uh, the first the first two episodes, I think, were leading me, it was that, okay, it was going to be about societies of those different magical creatures and how they interact with each other and how it can lead to war and conflict and love and, you know, a good show, like the makings of a good show, but with elements of uh, magic and uh, werewolves and vampire and all those kind of creatures. And it turned out... The show is just another ripoff of Twilight. I hated that. Like it's basically a love show. Literally, basically a love show. The whole thing that we're supposed to get hooked on is that this woman who is a magician or a witch or has witch ancestries, this woman is falling in love out of nowhere with a vampire. Good lord, out of no you know what? It's going to make me angry to talk about it. So, if you like those kind of stories about, you know, getting a love out of nowhere with people that you don't match with, go watch the show. I stopped episode four, and I'm not going back ever again. That was a lot. So that was my list of my top ten meh moment of 2018. I'm talking about TV shows, of course, and. Uh, 
maybe i'm not sure yet but maybe i'm going to do my top 10 worst and my top 10 best and you know you're going to see where you fall if you think i was wrong and i need to give one of these shows another chance uh you can just tell me in the comments so don't forget to subscribe and you know